Hello, I'm Dr. John Bender. And I'm Janessa Visconti. And this is What's Up Doc. Welcome to our podcast. Today, we are continuing our discussions about compounded semaglutide, the so-called skinny shot, and the, the miracle that people are seeing of getting to their ideal body weight and then being able to maintain that at a healthier, more energetic person. One of the challenges uh, when we get a new patient is I usually check their medication list to see if there's any medicines they're on that would cause weight gain. Did you know that there are so many medicines that cause weight gain as a side effect that patients just don't always realize? And as we start looking at different classes, there's, there's cardiac medicines like beta blockers. They make it hard to exercise. People gain weight on them. There are medicines for neuropathic pain like gabapentin and Lyrica or pregabalin that tend to cause significant weight gain over time. And it may be subtle. You know, you look at the product literature, it'll say, well, people gained a couple pounds. But that was over a couple of months. If you take these medicines for five or six years, if you're gaining a pound a month, 12 months later, you're 12 pounds heavier. Five years later, you're 60 pounds heavier. And that's where we really start to see the problem with chronic disease management. But the biggest class, aside from the two I just mentioned, is going to be the so-called psychotropics, or the medicines that people take to help with behavioral health and psychiatric conditions. In general, there's two large classes where we really see trouble, and it's with the antidepressants and it's with the antipsychotics, or the mood stabilizers many of which are also used to treat epilepsy. Some of the more egregious offenders are Abilify, which tend not to just make people overweight, but also diabetic, Lamotrigine. We see problems with Seroquel and Lithium. And when it comes to the antidepressants, almost all of them can cause weight gain as a side effect, with a few notable exceptions, and we'll discuss those here shortly. Now, it's not as simple when someone comes to me and say, they want to lose 50 pounds, I tell them, well, just stop your Prozac or stop your Abilify. We don't want people to become suicidal. And yet we still know that there's a problem that once they get to their ideal body weight, if they're going to stop compounded semaglutide, because it's a very expensive medicine, we don't want them to slowly start gaining weight again on their psychotropics. So here's some of the techniques that we use at Miramont Wellness Centers that you may want to discuss with your own physician or psychiatrist. There are some psychotropics that tend to cause weight loss as their main side effect or effect. One of the first is bupropion, also known as Wellbutrin. This medication was released as an SNRI, selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, that also afflicts or affects dopamine. And dopamine is important in the reward center of our brain. In the 1990s, the drug was relaunched under the brand name Zyban and given FDA approval to help people quit smoking. It made their cigarettes taste funny, but it also helped keep them from gaining weight when they quit smoking. It has since been approved to help with weight loss when given in combination with some other medicines. We'll talk about that here shortly. So one of my favorite tricks, if you will, of the trade is to add in a little Wellbutrin extended release, 150 milligrams daily, leave the person on their fill in the blank, Luvox, Prozac, Sertraline, Lexapro, Selexa, et cetera. And then after a few weeks, as long as things are going well, start reducing their other medications. So if someone's on 40 milligrams of Selexa, for example, I would add in some Wellbutrin, 150. 30 days later, we're gonna titrate that up from 150 to 300, provided they're not having side effects other than weight loss. And we will then take their Selexa down to 20 and then eventually down to 10 and then potentially even off. So that fast forward a year later, they're at their ideal body weight. They've maintained it for a number of months as a new normal doing our smart transition where they're microdosing with compound semaglutide. They've learned to live a new life such that their new normal is keeping them at their weight, not my drug, not the semaglutide. Now, when they discontinue semaglutide, they won't have that rebound weight gain because they're no longer in Selexa but they're also not suicidal or, or depressed because the Wellbutrin is now their antidepressant. We do the same thing with mood stabilizers. One of my favorite mood stabilizers is topiramate, also can be used for epilepsy. And again, it can't always replace a medicine for someone else, but it might be able to augment it and allow us to reduce a dose of Seroquel, maybe from 200 down to 100 or take some lithium down. Uh, particularly if a person's bipolar manic, we don't want to make them manic. 
So this has to be done in coordination with their psychiatrist or psychologist. Although because there is such a shortage of mental health providers, oftentimes we're the mental health provider. And so then we're playing that role in primary care. So then we're making these adjustments on our own. Uh, but in summary, if you're on psychotropic meds, go ahead, don't take my word for it, Google it, see if weight gain is a side effect, see if there are alternatives like the Wellbutrin or the Topiramate that you can use instead or in addition to for your antidepression or for your mood stabilization or for your epilepsy. And then make certain that while you're on your compound semaglutide that you're adopting a new normal, but also working toward the lowest possible dose that you need of those antidepressants. Some other quick pro tips, if you will, I generally don't do these reductions the first week of December. I don't want to withdraw an antidepressant and then make them horribly despondent during Christmas, right? That's not cool. Probably the best time of year to do it is like the spring or summertime when the days are really bright and sunny and long. They're, we don't see as much seasonal affective disorder, for example, and people can be out and about a little bit more and with other people so that they don't get as depressed, for example. Uh, well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Again, I'm Dr. John Bender. And I'm Jeanette Smith-County. And thank you for joining us on What's Up, Doc. See you next time. <laughs>